Before you watch this video, I have a quick announcement for you. We are live right now on twitch.tv slash Mogden. And if you want to join us, you just have to scroll down to the comment section and click the link in the pinned comment. Once you've done that, boom! you're in the live stream. Thank you so much for listening, now back to the video. So a lot of people ask me what do I think of the Wild Blood update, which if you're unaware of, just dropped yesterday, October 16th. For you guys watching this on YouTube, it might be two days ago. I'm not sure exactly when we're gonna be uploading this video, but yeah, it's gonna be one of those days. And uh, yeah, a lot of people have had really mixed opinions about the update. Some people like it, some people hate it, some people are unsure, like they, they're not really convinced about the update, but they cannot really say they hate it. Some people clearly like this and think it's the end of Albion Online as a whole game. Now what are my thoughts on this? Because if you guys watch my old videos, you know what I've been saying. I've been saying that if this update flops, it's looking really bad for Albion. And just to give you some context behind that, Albion Online has been in a rough state for a pretty long time right now. The first thing that happened that affected uh, the old player base, which in my opinion was a good change, but it still affected the old player base, was the fact that the skin economy has changed. I'm not gonna get into that uh, discussion again, but basically the referral system used to drop some skins that people assumed were exclusive. And turns out those skins were not exclusive and right now they're coming back. People ended up losing billions of silver. And arguably you can kind of understand why they were mad like again it's a good change but they were mad then there were some things that affected the solo players basically the premium price in those four years in which i've been playing went up from 4 million silver to 21 million silver. Premium last time I checked was 19 million silver or something like that. It's really hard to find that for a new player. So people end up having to actually pay for the premium, which in my opinion is not a bad thing in itself. I prefer to pay for the game just to not have pay to win in it. But at the same time, I know a lot of people don't want to play Albion as a subscription-based game and they would much rather play it as a free-to-play game. So solo new players also affected by the changes. Then we had some changes made to the gold economy. The gold economy affected the veteran players of of the game once more by basically adding a gold tax, an unannounced gold tax to reduce premium price. Now all the things that this tax managed to reduce was the amount of players that were playing the game because premium prices actually increased after the tax, they did not decrease. We're not sure why, SBI doesn't know why either, but yeah, that's yet another thing that affected the players. Notice that I did not mention the gameplay, I did not mention the broken meta, I did not mention the things that most people are bringing up when it comes to those types of discussions. Those things that I'm not mentioning are still very much problems. Yeah, the meta is broken. The gameplay is somewhat boring. There is a huge power creep happening in Albion right now. But I didn't even want to focus on those because everybody knows about those. Like, yeah, there's a lot of problems happening in Albion Online. And that's why I've been saying that if this update doesn't fix some of the problems, it's gonna be bad. Maybe, maybe if it just doesn't fix them but doesn't cause new problems, then maybe we can get behind this. But the update caused some pretty new problems. And that's what I wanna get into right now, chat. So, I'm gonna be taking every single thing that's coming in this update and tell you what I think about it. So, first of all, the biggest feature about this tracking. Arguably, you could say that the weapons are the biggest feature, but to get the weapons, you need to do the tracking. So, let's start with that. Tracking, in my opinion, is one of the coolest concepts that Albion ever implemented. On paper, it's amazing. You just go, you hunt for a specific artifact that you can only find by killing specific beasts. You're in the dangerous area of the black zone or the red zone and you gotta go as a solo adventurer or maybe with some friends and just tackle on the dangers of the black zone while you are also hunting a legendary beast that is rumored to live around specific areas in the black zone. It sounds amazing! And after you killed enough of them, you get yourself the artifact and boom! You become the monster you sought to destroy and you are just as strong as that monster was. You are the one that can prowl around and leave a trail of fear and terror behind you. It sounds amazing, but in reality, it's really not that good because my experience in the first day of this update was basically I was trying to get the prowling staff, which is the staff for the panther. That's my favorite one. And I was trying to get that for five hours straight. After the fifth hour has passed, I managed to get the second artifact and I was finally able to get the staff. Now you might be like, oh Mog, you just had bad luck. Yes, I clearly had a lot of bad luck. There were a lot of people that got the staff e earlier, but that's not really what I want to bring up right now. Because you see chat, if this was related to bad luck, then okay, sometimes I have good luck, sometimes I have bad luck. But it's not actually related entirely to bad luck. Because look at what SBI themselves have said in the post made on their website. Special launch setup. For the first few months, we're going to triple the usual amount of tracks. Basically, this uh, they've made this so that they allow players to spec up their profession, which is really nice, I guess. If you had just 
the normal amount of tracks, people would just deplete those tracks very, very fast and everything would be empty. You wouldn't be able to find the track because everybody would just steal your tracks. Creatures spawn from additional tracks. This is the interesting part. So let's say you normally have one track, but right now you see two more tracks. Well, those extra tracks will not drop creature specific ingredients so what does that mean that means that you have one creature that spawns naturally if you get that creature you have somewhat of a chance to get the artifact it's not 100 percent it's like 10 percent let's say but if you kill the other two creatures that were added on top of this those two guys have no chance to drop the artifact chat i want you to be aware of what this means i want you to be aware of the fact that if you go right now and kill your first mammoth in the black zone the first mammoth that you've ever touched you have a higher chance of getting a mammoth cup from your first mammoth and from the next five mammoths that you kill then you have a chance to actually get an artifact for those two extra creatures that have been added on top that sounds wild which kind of makes sense since the update is called wild blood but why like how is it possible that i have a higher chance to get five mammoths in a row from the first five mammoths that i'm killing and i don't want you to get me wrong what i'm saying it's a very low chance of happening it's almost impossible to kill five mammoths and get five mammoth cubs from every single one of them but almost impossible is more possible than impossible does that make sense a very low chance is a bigger chance than no chance and this is a no chance so that's kind of wild. That's kind of wild. That's the first thing. Uh, now, uh, again, I do understand why they couldn't leave the same drop rates because then the weapons would just overwhelm the market and they wouldn't be special anymore because people would just buy them from the market for the most part. But at least give us half the chance. Like maybe the normal weapon, uh, I mean, the normal hunt has a 10% chance to drop the artifact. This one has a 5% chance or 1% chance. Anything is bigger than 0%, right? Everything is bigger than 0%. Second thing that people have against this update, and I very much agree with them, is the fact that this is clearly aimed at solo and small scale players you know what else is aimed at solo and small scale players the roads of avalon yet you cannot track in the roads of avalon okay i understand why you couldn't track in the mists at the same time i feel like you should be able to track in the mists just like i feel like you should be able to track in the yellow zone but i do not understand why on earth you cannot track in the roads because that's the perfect area to do this tracking in like of course you should be able to track in the roads that's that's exactly what the roads are made for and that would breed some life in the roads and that might finally revive the dead content that are the roads of avalon so yeah uh, very much a weird thing and that's almost all that i have to say about tracking i very much like the idea and i am 100 certain that i'm gonna be loving it the second they reduce those two mobs those two extra mobs that they've added on top of the natural spawning one so that the drop chances of me getting the artifact are actually a little bit higher and the chances of me finding a track are a little bit lower as they should be this should be a rare thing not an impossible thing you know what i mean so yeah uh time will make this better for me but i'm not sure how many people will stay up until that moment for time to make this better you know what i mean second thing that's coming in this update and that's quite a controversial feature is the awakening system right now you can basically power up a weapon by essentially leveling up your weapon same way you spec up yourself well you can spec up your weapon but by specking up your weapon quote unquote specking up your weapon you are essentially adding certain traits to your weapon i want you to be aware of something gent whenever legendary items were first announced we didn't know about uh, awakened items or stuff like that we just knew about legendary items whenever they were first announced the biggest concern that people had were that legendary items would be just items with boosted stats like okay a legendary sword is just a sword with more damage that's exactly what we got now again this is not the legendary item this is the awakened item but essentially that's exactly what it is like it's just a weapon with more stats nothing interesting to that not to mention that it's a weapon with more stats that costs an insane amount of silver and that as far as i know at least uh, uh, due to some recent changes you cannot even use in uh, content like corrupted dungeons or hellgates or arenas because they were broken as the uh, uh awakened traits would not be capped by the ip cap so let's say okay i have a 1.5k ip weapon that would get capped and it would be like 1.1k in a corrupted dungeon but my awakened traits would still give me 200 more damage so that would be broken as far as i know they don't work anymore like that so right now why would you get them like don't get me wrong it was bad to allow those weapons in corrupted dungeons i'm very happy that they changed that if i remember correctly i might be wrong about this i hope they change that but at the same time it's also bad to give somebody a special weapon that they cannot use anywhere for the most part because in the like think about it 
mists, you're gonna meet 8.4 sweat lords. Uh, you might be the 8.4 sweat lord that's carrying an awakened weapon, but if you're not, you're gonna meet 8.4 sweat lords. Open world, you're gonna meet zergs. Roads, you're gonna meet small scale groups. Solo content was the only content in which people could some, I mean, especially newer players could, um, somewhat get advantages from those awakened items at the same time it's not really a system meant for uh new players so i don't really mind the changes the way i feel about this it's quite yeah like yeah change it however it's a system that i'm not going to get involved with it's a system that i don't find interesting and it's a system that could have been a thousand times better there's another thing right now there's also some content for the casual players finally content for the casual players the new players that just can play for let's say one hour per day they had a busy day at work and they want to boot up the game and just relax they don't care about zvz's they don't care about pvp they just want to play casually islands are finally reworked except that you're not gonna have access to them as a solo new player because they cost 26 million silver per island if you want to max it out it's 26 million silver this is not content for new players and right now i want you to just fall back for a second and realize something tracking cannot be done by new players because guess where the new players are like it or not most of the new players stay in the safe zones it's what it is like yes we're trying to convince them to go into the black zone so we can kill them but ultimately they just stay into the blue and yellow zones <laughs> sorry i had to say that i had to say that right it is what it is <laughs> bogle consumes that we have a monthly quota of people that we need to bring into the black zone so that Bogle can consume their souls. It's not my fault, it's how SBI works. But no, for real now. Those new players are gonna stay in the yellow and blue zones. Well, guess what you cannot do in the yellow and blue zones? That's right, tracking. You cannot track in the yellow and blue zones. So scratch that for new players. Oh, but they have access to islands. No, they don't have access to islands because they cost 26 million silver. Oh, Mog, but it's 26 million silver to max it out. Yeah, and like 15 million silver to get it to a decent level so that you can actually do some stuff on it almost a premium month for one island to buy an island when i started playing you had to pay 10k silver or 100k silver you know how much you have to pay now one million good luck new players enjoy <laughs> and i guess i guess you might argue that awakened uh, the awakened system might be a system for new players in which i say no it's absolutely not try it out <laughs> just try it out you're gonna see that it's not the system aimed at new players clearly so then this update launched with zero content for the highest percent of the players. Because the highest percentage of the players are actual new players. I mean, at least in a healthy game, that's how it should be. I hope that's the case for Albion. So if the biggest amount of players, if the biggest, ma if the majority of the players are not getting anything out of this update, then who is it for? And I want you all to understand, I am not a new player. This update gives me amazing stuff as a veteran. But when it comes to the health of the game, not giving anything to the new players, it's a pretty wild decision to make. And not only that new players are not getting anything, they're actually getting some things taken away from them. Because chat, among the things that we've read so far, there's also some hidden changes that are going to affect everybody now those hidden changes were hidden until yesterday and they come in the form of this right here now this might be somewhat of a complicated graph i will be absolutely honest i don't fully understand this myself either fully understand it but i do have a general understanding of what's going on this is a graph that's showcasing the transmutation costs when it comes to increasing the enchantment and when it comes to increasing the tier now what is transmutation just boil down let's say you have a four flat a tier four flat piece of hide and you really want to craft a 4.1 uh, i don't know leather armor but you don't have enough hide like let's say you have 4.1 hide but you're missing just one you need one more piece of 4.1 hide you can go grab yourself a 4.0 hide that you've gathered or that you bought from the market and go to the transmutation tab of any refiner and transmute that tier 4 flat hide into 4.1 by paying a small amount of silver people used to do that to basically craft 8.3 8.4 sets because think about it how hard is it to find 8.4 notes it's insanely hard words are fought over those notes so then how are so many players running 8.4 gear how do you find 8.4 gear every single time you go in the mist because people are buying 8 flat or 8 2 or 8 3 and they're slowly transmuting it to 8 4 that's how it works the prices for transmutation when it comes to tier 8 gear are increased by 342 percent 342 percent this has not been announced 
This was first announced yesterday. It was not in the NDA, it was not in the initial patch, and I'm not even sure if it was on the test server, because I'm gonna be honest, I did not test it over there. I didn't think it would change because it wasn't announced anywhere. So the prices for an 8.4 set or an 8.3 set might triple. Now what that means is that, uh, oh yeah, less 8.3 players in the mists. Yeah, there's gonna be less 8.3 players in the mists, but the way they do that is by affecting those players in a very, very shady way. If it was a straight up nerf to the 8.3 players, yeah, I feel like people would appreciate that. You wanna go with 8.3 and get yourself a huge advantage over everybody else? All right, you're gonna pay a lot, but at least announce it. Like, why make it shady? Why just hide it? And you can say, oh, but they've announced it. Yeah, the day in which the patch dropped in the middle of this whole wall of text. I'm, I'm, again, yeah, they did announce it, but it's as shady as it can be. It's as shady as it can be. And again, if he, if only this would solve the problem of uh, 8.3 sweat loads in the mist. But no, the actual good players that can reliably make money by running 8.3 are not going to be affected by this. They don't care if they pay... Uh, 10 million silver, 20 million silver, or 50 million silver. Because they make that back in like a day by praying 8.3 in the mists. It's not gonna be something that affects them. Look at one, for example. One is running 8.4 sets. Do you think he's gonna care that the price is triple right now? He's making millions of silver per day. He's making billions of silver per month. This is not gonna even scratch his wallet. Now, for the average player, this is definitely gonna be a big nerf. But for the high-end PvP players, they're not gonna feel this, I'm telling you. And the thing that affects the new players is this this right here even more hidden. The amount of fragments required for each level of enchantment has therefore doubled. What does that mean? Let's say you want to get a 4.1 armor, but you only have a 4 flat armor, and you've already crafted it so transmutation goes out the window for you. What you can do is get on the market, buy yourself some runes of the specific tier of the armor that you want to level up, that you want to boost up uh, or enchant, I should say. You go to the artifact foundry, you place the armor over there, and you use the runes that you've bought to enchant that to point 0.1. Well, right now it takes X amount of runes. After this update, it takes twice as much. Twice as much. And again, it's not a problem. This is SBI's game, they can do whatever they want. But why hide it? Why on earth hide it? That's my only question. Why would you hide this? You know what I mean? It's a very important part of the game. People are playing with this system. There's a lot of new players that are getting unenchanted gear just to enchant it themselves so that they win some money they're not gonna be aware of this because nobody reads this. And the few people that read this did not know about it until it already happened. So they did not have time to plan this out. They did not have time to readjust their strategies. Again, I was never into the economy side of the game. So me discussing Albion economics would be like double back discussing PVP. I just don't know what I'm talking about whenever I'm talking about this. Double back is a better resource when it comes to this. Uh, or other people that are crafting, I, I don't know, Double back is the first guy that I know about this. He's doing some shady stuff as a content creator, but as a crafter, he knows what he's talking about. The thing is, Jet, the thing is, just to sum this up. So, right now, we got a patch that is only somewhat good for the veteran players, but not entirely good because two out of three mobs have zero chance of dropping any of the artifacts, so it's not that good for veteran players. Uh, new players have no access to this because they are not available in the yellow zones and the blue zones, which again, I don't play over there, but there are new players that play over there. They should be accessible for them. Or are we making a patch in which, no play in which new players have nothing? Like, they don't get anything? Just veteran players and not even veteran players. I mean, I've already said that, so I'm not going to insist too much on this. Then we have Awakening, which not a lot of people will care about because ultimately is just not worth it. We have those shadow nerfs when it comes to transmutation and when it comes to enchanting. And basically the end product that we're left with is a patch that not a lot of people are happy about. And that's kind of a sad state. That's kind of a sad thing to say. This is a patch that not a lot of people are happy about. Now, does this mean that we should hate on SBI? I don't think that that's what it means. I don't think that's what it means. You got to understand that uh, SBI is a company made of people. People make mistakes. I wouldn't do a better job at managing this game. You wouldn't do a better job at managing this game. I don't think a lot of people would do a better job at managing this game. We would make just as many poor decisions as they are making or even more. Now, that doesn't mean that we should just, uh, hey, don't worry, SBI, you can mess up a thousand times, nothing is gonna happen. No, if they keep messing up like this, the game is gonna die. If they keep messing up like this, patch after patch after patch after patch after patch, yeah, people are gonna get tired of the game. Absolutely, people are gonna get um, tired of the game. But I think that moment is far, far, far away from happening. Because, let's be real now, among every other MMORPG that we can think of, 
Man, Albion is blessed to actually have a development team that even though they're making a ton of mistakes, man, they care about this game. They like this game. And you can see that in the things that they're actually creating. You can see the passion that they're putting into this. When you polymorph a player that's wearing an assassin jacket, that player gets transformed into a rat because the assassin jacket is traditionally worn by rats. There's those little things, little details left in the game that still show passion. And that word right there, passion. That's a long lost relic of the MMORPG world and Albion Online still has it. So let's not overlook that chat. With all the mistakes that SBI is making, of course, let's criticize, but let's do it in a constructive manner. Let's do it understanding that we are not working against this development team. Like WoW players are working against Blizzard. We are working with this development team because they care about the game, we care about the game. And that's good. And that's good.